Hello, hello. Welcome back to another episode of Gain, Grow, Retain. For today's installment, we are actually going with a little different format. So we are releasing the audio version of a webinar that we've recently hosted. So Jason Conrad, a principal and advisor for us at Customer Imperative, recently held a webinar with Churn Zero, uh, one of our partners on the customer success technology side. And uh, we talked about customer success operations. Hopefully you get some nuggets out of it, but this is the audio version of a webinar that we recently released with our friends at Churn Zero. Welcome to the Gain, Grow, Retain podcast. So the topic today, why build customer success operations? And I think it's really important that we start talking about where these operations functions started. Uh, you've got sales ops, you have marketing ops, you even have product operations if you think about DevOps. So let's talk about sales ops first. Sales operations, according to the internet, was created by Xerox. And that is, the I think, a great example where early on, especially as technology continued to advance, as competition heats up, companies started realizing that you have to have a dedicated team to help with three primary areas. You have to have a team that's focused on sales team strategy. So that could include your territory planning, it could be aligning with product marketing on your go-to-market, sales team organization. So what are the levels that we need? What are the job roles and responsibilities? How many senior client account executives do we need versus account executives? And then sales team efficiency and execution. And I'm gonna say this word execution a lot today because operations teams by nature do execution. If you think about a sales team, if you're a sales rep, your job is to close deals, generate leads with marketing and close deals. Your job is not to execute on strategic initiatives related to process, technology, org design, and so forth. These are all totally, totally applicable to customer success needs. And that's why I wanted to start with sales ops. The question is, who ensures that the renewal process happens for 100% of your accounts? And when I say 100%, I don't just mean uh, that you have a process. I'm talking that you actually have a 100% of accounts going through some sort of a renewal process. In most cases, it's either the head of customer success that's ensuring that a renewal process is happening consistently or the process isn't happening consistently. I can't tell you how many clients, uh, over 30 different clients I've worked with that have said, well, if they're on auto renew, we kind of just close our eyes and wait to see what happens. Um, or our, our motion is generally to be reactive. So this is uh, not surprising to me but if you think about the role of a VP or director of customer success, there's so much more strategy that could be done if you had a function that is responsible for ensuring process adherence. The second question, who administers your customer systems? So by customer systems, I'm talking about the broad definition. It could be Salesforce. It could be a customer success platform like Churn Zero. It might be the product that you use for customer experience measurement, such as MPS, or it could be your support system. One thing I can tell you for sure is that if you have a customer, a post-sale customer need that you've got to get prioritized, it's generally always going to be number two for sales ops or marketing ops behind, behind lead generation and supporting sales team efficiency. So I'm bringing that up because it's one really big uh, business case to have a customer success ops org that can help with this. And then secondly, the VP or director of customer success I'm here today to tell you it is explicitly not the, the role in a mature company for the VP of customer success to do system administration. So this is, again, just great reasons why customer success ops continues to be um, more and more prevalent today. So why customer success ops? That's the answer we're all here to, to get today. And what I'd like to start with before we talk about what it is, is why we need it. So very few of us have a customer success or a customer experience blueprint. And what I mean by blueprint is we all know that we have to show up and we have to retain customers, we have to make them happy, we have to upsell them. But to really be strategic and get to the point where we're a mature customer organization, we need to have four things in place. So Customer Imperative likes to work with our clients to create what we call a blueprint, which includes the vision, the strategy, the roadmap, and the plan for customers and customer success. So your vision should be refreshed on a two to three year horizon. Generally, your customer vision is aligned with your company vision. It's aligned with how you want your brand to be perceived, and it's aligned with where your company is going strategically. Your customer strategy is very much like a product strategy. You should generally refresh those annually. So an annual horizon in terms of planning cycle tied to either a company strategy, a go-to-market strategy, or a product strategy. So you have your strategy. That's kind of your strategic initiatives, or it's your strategic objective around what you want to do in a year. How do you get it done? You have to create a roadmap. 
So your roadmap is a backlog of initiatives. They could be customer experience initiatives. They could be initiatives around revenue growth, around client retention. And initiatives are nothing unless you actually have a plan. And we like to talk about plans in a way that's very agile. Many times with our clients, we can come up with hundreds and hundreds of initiatives and potential projects. And what happens if you create a list of potential projects is that list will sit on a shelf and you won't revisit it. So we like to talk to our clients about what we call agile planning and execution. This is a cross-functional way in your company of defining quick wins and getting them done on a quarterly basis. And then going through a planning cycle with a customer strategy team where you're looking at bigger picture investments, building a business case around those, and then assigning initiative teams to get them done. So what is customer success operations? Defining customer success operations. Customer Imperative is an expert on defining customer success ops. We've worked with over 30 companies to look at how teams are structured or not structured. And it really comes down to these five areas. Customer success ops runs all customer data, process, people, systems, and strategic initiatives. So this is everything from developing your renewal forecasting methods to making sure that you've got telemetry like around account help or NPS. It's around process. Do we actually have playbooks that customer success managers are running? Are they being proactive versus reactive? In terms of people, sales operations does this all day long, every day. Let's plan the sales team goals. Let's track their performance. Let's align our sales workforce to our go-to-market and our target markets. Systems, like we talked about earlier in the poll, if 39% of you are self-administering systems to facilitate customer automation, there's such a huge business case for this. So implementing and managing tools and owning the customer elements of the CRM. The key message here is that if you leave these items to the VP of customer success and the CSMs, nothing is going to happen. I'm here to today to tell you that you're not going to achieve the results that you want in maturing your organization and improving the customer experience if you don't assign a customer ops team to own this. And if it's not a team, you can start with one person. You as the head of customer success, you as a customer success manager or account manager are busy gaining, growing, and retaining customers. You are not doing execution, and you shouldn't be. So what does a customer success organization look like at maturity? We see a lot of different organizations out there, and it does change. It change, changes based on your go-to-market. It changes based on your product complexity. But in general, we've got four key areas that we see being invested in. The first is client services. In some teams, it's called onboarding. In some teams, it's called professional services. And that's the team that's doing implementation. They could be doing integration, training and education, maybe some strategic services. Then you've got client care and support. So this is your reactive team. They are handling customers uh, with their inbound requests. They are potentially doing more technical support at higher tiers. Then you've got your client or customer success management based on the term that you like. And this is where you get into the true account management. These are the teams that are developing product adoption strategies and, and client engagement strategies. In some cases, they're owning renewal and upsell. And in some cases, they are paving the way for renewal and upsell. And then you have customer success operations. So customer success operations is the team we're here to talk about today. This is the team that can really push forward those strategic initiatives you have around your client experience. This is the team that can help you forecast renewals. They can help you plan. They do all the work around data, analytics, systems, and implementing process. I work with a company uh, that is a, a New York-based company. They're called Cypher Health. And I think they're a great example of a team that's built really efficient customer success operations. Uh, this team has a customer success team of 20 to 30 people, and they've done an amazing job with getting revenue health dashboards, account health dashboards, product usage in Salesforce, and actually being able to chip away at customer success initiatives that are going to drive that customer journey. So that's just one quick example. So we also got a lot of questions before the webinar on where does this sit? I've got sales ops. Maybe I have revenue operations. Maybe I have a chief revenue officer that actually owns all of revenue, bookings and recurring revenue. Where does it sit? In some cases, we see customer success operations rolling up to a different leader that owns sales and revenue. So you can still have CS operations in terms of customer experience, maybe professional services advancement, uh, initiatives that pave the way for upsell and renewal. You can still have that separated from the team that owns sales and revenue ops. And the, the message is it changes based on your org structure and your company and your executive leadership. We see some companies that have sales ops uh, just owning compensation, territory planning, sales efficiency process, sales enablement and training. And oftentimes that means that the executive leader of sales owns new logo sales only. Where you see customer success operations includes all of the revenue ops as well as the CS ops. 
And in some companies, those are called the same things. We see revenue operations being synonymous with customer success operations. It's just based on how you define it. What we believe as the experts in CS operations is that these things should be all together. And I know that for some, this is inflammatory because people hate org charts. Org charts are very close to our jobs. They're very close to um, something that we don't like, which is a ton of change. But we really like to see these teams being together. And here's why. The, the alignment that you get of aligning these four areas, marketing, sales, revenue, and customer success ops together, can help you get things done three times faster. Don't quote me on three times. I actually think it would be five times. Because how many times have you been in a situation where you have an initiative that you need to push forward, but you're relying on another functional area of the business for some dependency? Maybe you need access to data. Maybe you need a technical resource. Maybe you have team members that have competing initiatives because you've got different strategic objectives being driven from different functional areas. It happens all the time. You have too many silos and you can't get things done. I used to work for a company uh, called Snag. It is the largest marketplace for hourly work. We took these four areas and we merged them together and we saw magic happen. We had one owner of our customer data, whether it was our prospective customers or our current customers. We had really tight process around understanding where do we have gaps in account coverage? How can we get more data into the platform around product adoption and ROI? And then that gave us a lot more analytics. We could look at LTV to CAC, we could look at profitability, we could really understand our customers more deeply. And the best part was when we did strategic planning, we were all aligned around what the major initiatives were and we didn't have to fight between silos to get work done. So now that we've talked about why customer success ops, what is it, let's cover how does it evolve? I wanna to acknowledge to everyone today, we've got companies based on the registration list that are the whole way from 500K in revenue to possibly multiple billions of dollars in revenue, if not double digits in billions. So I know that there's a spectrum here and I wanna talk about that. The evolution of the customer operations function starts when you start hitting that $10 million mark. Companies that we work with, sub 10 million, are generally just investing in customer success for the first time. So you don't start with a customer operations role, but once you hit that 10 million, especially as you uh, start approaching 20 million, you start to see more specialization. You might have a customer success manager, you might have implementation consultants, you've got support people, and what comes with that is a lot more process and a lot more need for efficiency. So that's where we see it start. Once you hit that 20 million mark and the whole way up to 40 million, you don't have any choice but to optimize and automate. The reason we say that is because you cannot just scale customer success managers or account managers linearly as your revenue grows. So if you go from 20 million to 40, you can't just double the account managers. You can't double the customer success team. It does not scale. Your company can't afford that on the P&L. Your investors will not accept it. So you have to optimize and automate at this point. When you hit the 40 plus range, you're now behind if you don't. And the reason is because companies that hit that 40 plus million in revenue are starting to get more strategic with how they create wow customer experiences. So they're thinking about what's my customer journey. They're investing in customer engagement. They're investing in analytics. They're investing in ways to predict if their customers have lagging metrics in terms of product adoption or in terms of sentiment, if they're talking about you negatively in the market. So you're behind if you don't invest in it at that point. The end all be all message is it's always important at every stage. So if you're a $10 million company and you can invest in a customer success ops analyst, do it. If you're a $40 million company, talk to me about why a director of customer operations is important for you. So how do we approach it? How do we implement it? We talk a ton about how this is important and what the role is, but how do we actually get it done? Before we talk about how to get it done, I'll tell you what's important when you do this. The problem that we have is alignment is hard. So if you're one of the, the executive team members or the C-suite members today, this slide is for you. Because I want your head of customer success to come to you and say, here's my problem, let's talk candidly. What a CEO cares about is brand growth and revenue growth. What our other executive team members are caring about in many cases is whatever their initiative for their functional area is right now. So for example, for the CIO, it could be infrastructure. For CMO, it could be generating leads. Chief product officer, it's developing and releasing the next feature as fast as possible. For chief customer officer, it could be as broad as services and support issues. It could be customer engagement issues. It could be retention issues. Very seldom are all of these functional areas aligned around key customer strategy initiatives. So how do we solve the real customer experience problems when everyone is headed down a different path? 
The other challenge that we have when we're implementing customer success apps or trying to do strategic customer initiatives is that you have to do change management. Change management is not optional. And this is a very widely published metric on the uh, success and failure rates of projects that involve strategic change. In general, over 70% of change projects fail. And the reason, if you look at the quadrant here that we have, is generally the solution is right uh, in many cases, but the implementation is poor. So very few projects have the right solution with an effective implementation. Over 70% of projects fail because of a lack of focus on change management. So this is majorly important. And again, your VP of customer success and your CSMs are not going to be thinking about strategic change management for their customer success operations functions. So here's how we recommend you do this at Customer Imperative. We believe that customer success operations should be agile. So the first thing that we do is implement what we call a customer strategy team. And this is really a retention and growth council. So this team runs governance around your customer strategy. It's the team that provides executive sponsorship. So this does involve executive level team members that drive customer strategy goals to company and product and go-to-market goals. And they help prioritize and remove roadblocks. The other team that we recommend is what we call customer initiative teams. I know it says customer decision teams on there, but the next time I do this webinar, we're gonna call it customer initiative teams. And the reason for that is you have initiatives that are gonna be planned on an, agile, on an agile rhythm. So quarterly, you should be thinking about where are we based on our objectives? What are the results that we wanna get? And how are we gonna know that we're succeeding and delivering on those objectives? And what are the initiatives we need to put behind that? It could be product, it could be support, or it could be customer experience. There are so many. If any of you have ever had to revamp your implementation process, you know what this is like. And what we recommend is that these teams work on an agile iteration rhythm. So a customer strategy team is generally consisting of a chief customer officer or whoever's playing the chief customer officer role. It could be SVP, VP, director of customer success. We like to see operations uh, leadership involved there. We like to see CS operations consultants involved there. And we like to see CS operations analysts. If you only have one of those, that's okay. The strategy team should be comprised of executive team members that have a stake in the customer experience. So many times we'll also see CMOs, we'll see chief product officers, and the most mature companies involve the CEO in this as well. Customer initiative teams are comprised of functional leaders. So if you have an initiative around improving the support experience, you might have your director of support, you might have functional managers. Maybe your support issue is that you don't have enough content on the internet about how, how your product works. So maybe you have product marketing or content marketing involved there. Subject matter experts. If you have something, an initiative around the customer experience that you need subject matter expertise in, maybe you need a data scientist. And the other thing that people forget about customer initiative teams is you're doing it wrong if it's all inside the building. And I wanna focus on that for a second. We oftentimes think that the problems that we're trying to solve with our company or our product have to be solved in time in, inside of our four walls, and that is a completely wrong assumption. Your customers actually have the best input, the best feedback, the best data, the best stories about how to solve these problems and what their experience is. You might not actually implement what they tell you to implement, but what you will do is get the stories and more deeply understand their problems so that you can come up with solutions. CS operations teams build process. That is something that is just inherent to the job. So these could be anywhere from what's your upsell and renewal process to your customer onboarding, or it could be more strategic, like your customer communication and customer engagement strategy. Where you are on the customer success continuum and where you are in the maturity is really what's gonna drive where you focus first. A lot of companies that we work with that are in the sub $20 million range are just starting to get a really cohesive renewal process. Whereas you look at companies a billion plus, they're working on very strategic initiatives, like how do we create advocates of our customers through automated customer engagement? Customer success operations also helps build process that will help you have better metrics. So this is a lot of metrics I'm putting up here. Don't be overwhelmed. It's really just based on what's important to you. But the four areas that we wanna see metrics in are revenue, product, customer feedback, and customer experience. So examples, as a customer success operations leader, I will build you a revenue forecast. I will show you what revenue is up for renewal and what revenue is up for at risk. And what I like to talk about here, and we've, we've written a lot about this on the Customer Imperative blog, is you should be able to walk into a board meeting and have a very crisp slide on what revenue is up for renewal this quarter, what's at risk, and why, by category. Your CS operations team will also help you with product metrics. So collaborating with the head of product and your product managers, you should give customer success managers product usage and product adoption data. If they don't have it, 
they are operating blind. And I don't care what kind of product you are, whether you are a consumer-based product or an enterprise B2B product, I've seen companies that do invoicing software that have product usage and adoption data that helps their CSMs be proactive. So you could be doing the most enterprise B2B workflow, you still need product usage data. Customer feedback, NPS, CSAT, looking at the comments, analyzing those, feeding that back into the leadership team on what should be invested in. This is such an important customer operations role. And then customer experience. If you don't have a support operations team that's really looking at their operational efficiency, that's an area that customer success operations can invest in as well. So finally, we also got a lot of questions on LinkedIn about who should I hire? What's the job profile? So starting with the requirements, you really want someone that's strong with analytics. So they need to be someone who understands data, understands potentially business intelligence tools, understands how to pull reports. Experience in a prior operations role we like to see. If you're small and you're looking for an, an analyst, I would recommend that they still have some sort of operations background. Working for a SaaS technology company will help a lot here. They don't have to come from customer success. They can come from sales ops. They can come from revenue ops. In general, you want someone who's comfortable with understanding process and understanding operational efficiency. Strong Excel and Salesforce, Salesforce skills are a must. If you're not comfortable with CRM, if you're not comfortable with customer technology, that's a no-go. So what about personality characteristics? This is very important in terms of job fit. You need to be analytical. You need to be intrinsically analytical and problem oriented. And what I mean by that is you need to be driven to look at a process and then think about how to improve it. And it has to be something that you enjoy doing. You also need to deep dive into trends and anomalies. So you need to find that kind of person who can look at data and have a level of professional skepticism around it and say, well, why does the data show us that? Is the data showing us the right thing? Strong communication and cross-functional collaboration skills, again, completely key. Customer success cannot impact customer experience, cannot impact revenue growth if they're doing it within the four walls of their organization. So just like I said, if you're doing customer strategy inside the building and not involving your customers, you're doing it wrong. Customer success teams that take this all on themselves are also doing it wrong. And that's why we try to get that customer strategy team in place that's cross-functional. What that means is that CS ops has to be able to cross-functionally collaborate. So you've got to have someone who can influence without authority. And then obviously, you've gotta be organized. You've gotta have great time management because there's always more work to be done than you're gonna be able to do in the quarter, in the month, in the week. We also get a lot of questions about comp. So comp really depends on the needs of your organization and the scope of the role. So for some companies, we see a customer success ops analyst. I would say generally they could make between 60 and 80K base. And you wanna make sure that they've got incentive too. And if the question that you have is, how should their bonus incentive be calculated? You should definitely consider revenue. Tying a customer success ops analyst to revenue retention, maybe gross revenue retention, net revenue retention, it's extremely important. You want them to be incentivized to really drive operational efficiency and drive customer experience initiatives. If you've got a director of CS ops, you're gonna be looking at someone a little more senior. So what we see companies paying in the market, and it completely depends on where you are, is generally the whole way from, I'd say 120K to 200K OTE. So you want someone in that role that's been in the role for five plus years, five to 10 years. You want someone who's really gonna be a senior leader on your leadership team. And you need someone who's the right hand to the chief customer officer or the VP of customer success. Like I said, it varies by go-to-market strategy and selling motion, but you do need to think about what's important for your business right now based on where you are. If you want to talk about this, because I know it's complex and it's very situational, just shoot me an email. It's jason at customerimperative.com. I'm happy to talk to you about it one-on-one. -on -one. We consult with companies all the time on this topic, and it's, it's really important that you get this right. So in summary, your sales ops team is focused on enabling sales, and your marketing ops team is focusing on creating the automation needed to generate leads at scale. As a customer success leader, your needs will be heard, and they will be empathized with, but they will always be a close second. And when optimized, you as the head of customer success or you as a customer success manager, you are not meant to do execution. Execution sits with customer operations, customer success operations. VPs of customer success are meant to drive customer strategy and lead customer success teams. CSMs are meant to engage customers, proactively engage customers, renew them and grow them they are not meant to do operations and project management. CSMs by nature do not manage process data and systems. 
if you're a CSM, I know half of you on the call are today, you're waking up every day and wondering how you're gonna get ahead of your customers. So in summary, this is why you need to invest in customer success ops, the same way that sales operations, marketing operations, product operations, DevOps, all these functions have been invested in. And I promise you that you can grow faster with a customer first approach. Hey guys, thanks so much for taking the time to listen to the Gain, Grow, Retain podcast. If you liked what you heard, please take a moment and share the podcast with your friends and colleagues and subscribe. We really appreciate it. Talk to you soon.